Looks like the Deep Seek team is back again with a fresh new update with the introduction of their Deep Seek V3.1 Terminus model. This release maintains the model's original capabilities while addressing several user reported issues. It has key improvements including enhanced performance of both the code agent as well as the search agent along with better language consistency. But overall this Terminus model is delivering more stable and reliable output across various sorts of benchmarks compared to its previous version. Now, when you compare the Terminus model to their earlier DeepSeek V3.1 update, the improvements are quite noticeable, though it's not groundbreaking, but it's still a decent upgrade. The benchmarks show a slight increase in the Sway verified benchmark test with agentic tool use, and it is showcasing upgrades in reasoning benchmarks such as MMLU, Humanities Last Exam, as well as a slight modest bump in live code bench. Now, overall, these performance are particularly with the reasoning mode enabled without tool use. But in essence, DeepSeek V3.1 Terminus isn't a massive leap forward, but it offers meaningful upgrades in key areas like coding performance, reasoning, search agent capabilities, and it makes it an overall great worthwhile update for many users like various developers. Now, what you'll notice is that there's actually a slight decrease in performance on certain benchmarks like Code Force as well as ADAR Polygot. And the reason why is because there's trade offs in optimization. The team might be focusing on improving stability with its reasoning capabilities, which is why you see these decreases. Could be also benchmark variants, a focus on fine tuning the agentic tool use benchmarks, which is why you see an increase on these benchmarks like Sway Verified as well as the Terminal Bench. So overall, it's not something huge to, or like something to panic about, but it is something that they have done as a trade-off in terms of optimization. But here's my two cents. If you're looking for an open source model that packs performance while also being super efficient, the DeepSeek V3.1 Terminus is the model of your choice. This is due to its pricing where it's listed at 27 cents for 1 million input tokens and $1 per 1 million output tokens. The only downside is, is the context, which isn't massive, but it's relative to the different models that we've seen on this channel, where it's listed to have 131k context window with a 65.6k max output. But overall, it delivers strong agentic performance and reasoning, which is definitely an unbeatable value, which we're going to be showcasing throughout today's video. If you've been hearing all the hype about AI agents, but wondering what actually works, that is exactly why today I'm excited to showcase this guide by HubSpot called Master AI Agents in 2025, The Strategic Advantage. This practical guide from HubSpot CMO and CVP of Marketing cuts through the noise showing you where to start, which AI agent application delivers real value, and how to implement them for real business impact. Inside, you'll discover how to automate marketing workflows with AI content creation and analytics, accelerate sales with prospect research and smarter follow-ups, and even streamline operations with automated documentation and real-time insights. Plus, you'll get a step-by-step -step blueprint for selecting, deploying, and measuring agents that boost efficiency without replacing jobs. So unlock your competitive advantage. Download the free Master AI Agents in 2025 guide with the link in the description below. Don't watch the AI revolution, beat it. Download this for free today and gain the strategies forward thinking companies are already using to stay ahead. Now, if you're looking to get started with this model, you can definitely do so through accessing it via DeepSeek's chatbot, which has already implemented the new Terminus model directly here. You also have the ability to access it via API that DeepSeek provides. And if you wanna use an external provider like OpenRouter, you can even use this as well. So let's just get started with all the benchmark tests. This is where we're gonna first have it create a SaaS landing page that has many features. Essentially, this is something that I usually test any model out to get a good feel of its front-end capabilities, as well as how well it is in terms of taking a creative approach with the prompt that I state to add as many features and how well it is in terms of just coding out various components. So let's see what it actually ends up generating. Now, in the meantime, I'm gonna have Kilo code tackled this task powered by the DeepSeek Terminus model, where I'm going to have it create a modern web browser that's similar to Chrome. And I recommend that you use Kilo code as well, because this is a way for you to actually access free credits and get some generations 
with a powerful coding agent. But essentially, this is a prompt that evaluates the model's ability to generate creative product ideas. And I'm trying to have it propose a technical feature where it can design a browser concept that balances different functionalities as well as innovation. So you can see right now with its reasoning capabilities, it is working on in-depth analysis on how it can tackle this task. And then it's going to deploy multiple agents to tackle it. So while this is generating, let's actually now take a look at what the SaaS landing page looks like. Let's click run. And this is our SaaS landing page, which definitely looks like a typical AI generated SaaS landing page, but it has all the components that you would expect. And I told it to add lots of features and I guess it kind of did because it added how it works to the section, powerful features with animations, different uh, cards with different components, which you can see has been displayed. And overall, it's well structured and it looks pretty decent. So it did pass this test and it does better than the previous version, which is definitely good to see. Now with the reasoning enabled, this is where it's going to think before actually responding. And this is where we're going to get a better thought put answer. And essentially, I'm sending in this prompt where I'm telling it that I'm a truck driver making around 65K a year and I'm aiming to retire in 30 years. Could you draft up a portfolio management proposal? Essentially, it will focus on numerical reasoning as well as forecasting where it's going to be able to determine the retirement plan. It is also going to focus on different domains like asset collection, risk management. And one thing I noticed right away is that it didn't actually think too much. It is something that thought for nine seconds, which isn't a lot for a reasoning model. But overall, it worked on creating a plan, talking about the core principles, the different parts to take to accomplish this strategic plan, like the action plan, where to put your money, 401k, where if you're in the States, you can invest in that or a similar plan, depending on the country, uh, different steps you can take, maxing it out, the portfolio, et cetera, et cetera. But it is still going and we'll take a final look at it afterwards. And overall, we're trying to see how well it is in terms of tailoring a specific plan based off the income timeline as well as goal. Now, I sent in this exact prompt to the open router provider, and I got a better detailed answer that looks a lot structured. And this is something that I found to be better compared to what I got from their chatbot. I don't know why, but what I got from this open router answer is definitely better than the chatbot. And it looks like it did a great job in focusing on tailoring a plan to the specific income that it's set, as well as the timeline. So after 30 years, your contribution alone would total 180K with compounding and the portfolio could be worth approximately 567K in today's dollar, according to inflation, which is pretty cool. So it was able to also consider inflation, the different principles, as well as how you can set it up depending on which country you're in. So reasoning wise, I definitely prefer these answers compared to its previous version. So that's good to see. But now that we have finished generating the browser. Let's actually take a look at it where we can reveal this in the file explorer and open it up. And there we go. This is the Nexus browser. This is something that it had generated and it looks pretty cool. You have the main dashboard, I guess, where you can access different websites. Obviously it's not going to work, but you can see that I can click on things and I can search up different websites. I have an extension store, which is cool. I also have a settings tab. I can refresh, but overall it generated the base structure of a browser. Next up, I'm going to have it create a butterfly in SVG code. Essentially, we're trying to see how proficient it is in generating SVG code, as well as if it's able to display a symmetrical butterfly with its generations. Now it looks like it is finished. We can click on run and that does not look like a butterfly, but I guess it got the main body type, right? I'm going to use reasoning and I'm actually going to use the open router provider to have it generate a butterfly to see if we get a different answer. So I've copied the code for the SVG butterfly and I'm going to go over to this online SVG viewer and paste it in. And it looks like it failed at this, which is kind of surprising because usually with my last video on the DeepSeek V3.1, I was able to create a butterfly with uh, SVG code. So it's kind of surprising. So I've actually tried it again creating a butterfly with deep think enabled. And this is, I guess, the best butterfly we've gotten so far. I guess it was trying to animate it, but it didn't actually create the main structure of the wings. So I guess this is kind of a fail, which is kind of surprising to see. 
Now, lastly, I'm going to have it create a Minecraft clone. And usually, most models now are able to actually generate this. And looking at this so far, it definitely looks pretty cool. Now, the functions don't look great because I'm falling out of the map for some reason. But it added sound, which is actually pretty cool. I'm able to place blocks. I can break things. And it looks like I'm falling out of the world. So, I guess a lot of the functions don't actually work as it's supposed to. But I guess it's decent because I'm like struggling to stay on the world but i can actually place things down which is i guess kind of functional but overall you can say it kind of passed it because it added a lot of different features and it created the main structure of a 3d minecraft clone if you like this video and would love to support the channel you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different ai tools for free on a monthly basis plus daily ai news and exclusive content plus a lot more but that's basically guys for today's video on the DeepSeek v3.1 terminus model this is a cost efficient high performing model which i definitely recommend that you try out and it's something that you can easily get started with through their chat bot. But that's basically it, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the description or the comment section below. I'll leave all these links in the description below. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the second channel. Join the newsletter. Join our private Discord. Follow me on Twitter. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe. Turn on the notification bell. Like this video. And please take a look at our previous videos so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity. And I'll see you guys really shortly. Peace out, fellas.